Welcome back to part three of the hardest Cuphead challenge. Um, I'm using my voice to narrate this time, so let me know what you think about that. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments. So first of all, we're fighting Tom and Jerry here. Design-wise, he's one of my favorite bosses. I think he looks super rad. And the music is so good, too. Uh, you should look up some of the remixes on YouTube. But for the actual boss fight, I am not a huge fan of it. Uh, if you haven't seen my challenge videos or series before, I can only use the worst weapon. In this case, it's the chaser. I don't get any supers, I don't get any charms, and I can't take any damage. In the past, I have said the chaser wasn't that bad, but guess what? I was wrong. The chaser is fucking terrible because it, it just makes this boss fight last so long, and the EX move is garbage. If I was fighting this boss normally, I would use spread, and I would just get up in his little rat asshole, and I would just spray him to death, and I would use my laser beams, and I would it, it, this 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 phase right here would take like 20 seconds. It, it would be nothing, right? But because I am using the chaser, I just have to bend over and take it until he feels like dying. It gets harder and harder as time goes on, uh, with the bottle caps and the positioning and the fire. It's definitely not a fun phase. So that's funny because normally Werner Wormen is actually the easiest boss fight of Isle 3. And now I personally think he gets, becomes one of the hardest ones. Maybe not the hardest, but definitely like top two, top three. And then there's the cat phase. I don't know why this phase took me so long to do this time. Like I'm blaming the chaser. Because normally what I do is I would just jump up and I would just fucking optic blast and all these ghosts would be gone and the boss would be dead really quick. He doesn't have that much health normally when you have a real weapon and not the goddamn chaser. But, but with this combination, without smoke bomb, if I can't parry his, their pink projectiles, I'm not even bothering to parry right now. It's, it's too dangerous, right? It just makes this boss really, really tedious. I could, you know, shoot the ghost to make my life a little bit easier. Holy shit. It just makes the fight that much longer, because the bot, the stupid ghosts just respawn every like 15 seconds. There you have it. That's Werner Wormen. Fuck Werner Wormen. That was no fun. <laughs> Good day for us. Well done. Oh. Oh. Hey, look, it's the worst boss in the game. It's Rumor Honeybottoms. I hated this fucking level so much when I played through Cuphead the first time. This and Grim Matchstick took me days to get down, but surprisingly, it really wasn't the hardest one in this challenge. And I think a big part of that is being able to use the pea shooter. Uh, I can keep long range, I have an EX move that doesn't suck dicks, and it's just overall a decent weapon even though it's the first weapon you get in the game. So that really played a big part, I think, to make this whole thing more manageable. So, anyone who's actually played uh, Rumor Honeybottoms will probably agree with me, especially if you've played on expert mode. The hardest thing about this boss isn't the bullet bills or the weird triangles and the magic, it's the platforms. Uh, on expert mode, I know for sure, there are way less platforms. Like, some of them are just missing, right? And you, the worst feeling is when you're trying to just dodge something and trying to get out of the way and all of a sudden oh shit there's just no platform there why because fuck you that's why and that's and that's just unfair right and that's why i this and grim matchstick both have these moving random platforms and that's why they're two of the hardest fights in the game in my opinion so when i get to this part any damage i do to her actually scales forward into the last phase so that's why i haven't really been using my super that much uh, and when you get to here this is when the real fight starts, when she becomes the fucking 747, and that's when you have to really start focusing. But it's actually not as hard as I first thought. See, these fists, like, I always thought they were homing, right? I thought they tracked you like the purple spheres. But it turns out they actually have a set trajectory, so they're really not that hard to dodge. And I can focus more on not getting cut in half by the giant buzzsaw. The, the gist of this phase is basically Keep your height as high as you can, for the most part. Watch those fists to avoid getting double fisted in the ass. And the instant you see her having that constipated face, you haul ass to the other side of the screen. And that's it. It's actually not too bad. 
All right, Captain Brinybeard. If you've watched my S-rank guide for this guy, you'll know he's one of my favorite bosses in the game to fight. Even when I'm not recording videos or doing a specific challenge, I go back and fight him on expert just for fun, to keep my reflexes sharp. That's, that's not weird, is it? But the thing about this fight where I have to use the lobber is that it doesn't actually make the fight harder. It just makes the fight longer. So because I've already done a video talking about how about you know all the different parts of this boss, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna speed up here just so you guys aren't bored. Uh, one thing that was really nice about this is through this whole challenge is I end up using the lobber a lot more. I never actually used the lobber when I played the game normally, uh, but now I've learned that it's actually pretty good, especially that EX move. When you get to this part, it's actually so fucking easy compared to some of the other bosses. And even if you're using the lobber, it doesn't matter what weapon you use, it's so easy. Because all you have to do is just jump over the fireballs and duck under the laser. And if the barrel's gonna hit you, you just dash. That's it. Super simple. I, I feel like you should be like a World 2 boss, to be honest. But one cool thing about the lobber is that when you do the EX move, you actually do double damage to the enemies around the thing you hit. In this case, I mean, I beat it, but this will come in handy a little later, so a little pro tip for you guys. It's time for Sally's stage play. So for this one, I am also using the lobber. And it's really not that bad. Like the, For most of the fight, the weapon choice isn't the problem. And this boss in general really isn't that hard. Except without charms, it gets a lot tougher. Because what I would normally do is I would use Smoke Bomb to just teleport behind her. Without that, she becomes this massive wall that, it's, that she can easily corner you if you're not careful. Uh, so... This phase is really bad, so you can see me unloading my EX all over her before it really starts. The babies are just terrible. The mice are terrible. She's terrible. I'm terrible. Everything's terrible. So the sooner we get this over with, the better. One thing that's interesting to notice is that the milk doesn't actually hurt you after it hits the ground. So as long as it hits the ground, you'll be fine. Now, I actually really love this phase. It's a nice callback to old JRPGs like Final Fantasy VI, and it's by far the easiest phase in this entire match. As long as you focus fire on the meteor, as soon as it comes out, it's fairly straightforward, and the lightning bolts are pretty easy to dodge. If possible, try not to stand directly under her, uh, because the lightning bolts might trap you underneath. Now this is the worst, the worst part. Notice how, even when I'm jumping, I can barely reach her fucking toes with the lobber, and I have to constantly dodge that stupid umbrella and the random roses that fall out of the sky. The trick here is to be patient. Don't worry if your bullets are actually hitting her. Who cares? Just try to survive. Eventually, you'll do enough damage and she'll die, but like, you have to play defensive. Compared to the next boss, she is a piece of cake. Boop, boop, all aboard the Horseshit Express. This boss is really not that hard with an appropriate weapon. The Lobber is a really fucking inappropriate weapon. Thankfully, the Lobber EX does tons of damage if you hit the eyeballs right in front of him because you'll catch him in the blast radius. But that took me hours and hundreds of deaths to figure out. If you're not familiar with this boss in general, if any pink projectile hits the little pink cranks on your cart, it'll move your cart to the left or right. But you can also parry it yourself to move your cart and have a little control over where you're going. I really don't like this phase because there's so much randomness. Where will the head spawn? Fuck you, that's where. Sometimes you get lucky and it spawns on top of you and you can get in a couple of EX moves. Sometimes, you get bitch slapped by Mr. Bone's wild ride and there's nothing you can do about it. Ugh. Now, this one is way more fun. You have to take up both of these weird lightning brothers, but you don't know which one will start shooting first. So you just have to pick one and start laying it into him. 
the ghosts, if you kill them, they will drop a pink skull when they die. So that can be that can move your cart back and forth if you're not careful. But as you can see, it's really fun to jump, parry a skull, and then use an EX move on the boss. It's really, really satisfying. And I wish that this fight had more of that in the actual game. So this is my favorite phase in all of Phantom Train. Oh god, this phase was the fucking worst. So how this works is that in order to damage him, you have to parry his tail and shoot into his little engine heart. But when you open that fucking grate, fireballs start shooting all over the goddamn screen. Plus, off screen, you'll see that he's shooting this weird bone ring at you and it kind of tracks your horizontal position. With Lobber, you have to keep jumping in order to hit him. Like you see most of my bullets, they aren't even reaching him. But if I'm jumping, that means I'll probably get hit with the fireball, or with the bone ring, or maybe the platform will have moved, or maybe I'll walk, I'll jump into one of these fucko lanterns. It's terrible. So I honestly think this final phase is the hardest in the game so far. Even more than Grim Matchstick's final. Oh, fuck. Phase, because... That level was hard from the first couple phases, and the last one was just really stressful. This one, you just have to be watching like 13 different things at once. Fuck this boss. Thank you to everyone who's watched this series and cheered me on. It was really, really fucking difficult, but I'm in the home stretch now. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Please, I've, I've suffered for so long, please. All right, later guys.